This is the Jeff Santos Show. It is indeed the Jeff Santos Show that you're tuned into. Again, here every Monday through Friday, 3 to 6 Eastern Time, 12 to 3 Pacific, and that's where we find our next guest. He, of course, is the Renaissance Man. He, of course, is Democracy Watch News. He, of course, is uh, Daily Coast. He, of course, is a great musician. And he, of course, is Mark Taylor Canfield, who you hear on the vocals talking about Bernie Sanders. Let's hear a little bit of it. How about you? A green new deal. What we need today. You gotta stop the fossil fuels, baby. That means no other way. I'm talking Bernie Sanders. Yeah, he is the man. Proclaiming Bernie Sanders. Throughout this land. I'm talking to Bernie Sanders. Santo show that you're tuned into. That's Mark Taylor Canfield's music. Now you'll hear from the man himself, MTC. How you doing, man? Great tune. Oh, hey. Thank you. You know, he's still the man. As far as I'm concerned, Bernie is still the man, and we all love him. And thanks, Ron, for giving the world premiere to that song. It's never been released or heard anywhere else on the planet. So thank you for that. All we just right. Mastering it today. About an hour ago. Well, we thank you uh, for that. Thank and you. on behalf of my great producer, Ron Kreider, that is uh, fantastic. Well, debut here. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, platinum record, Mark. That's great stuff. Well, it was a live show, you know, but it was a little bit dirty and messy because, you know, live recordings are. So I had to spend a lot of time holed up in the studio. It's a good time for that, obviously, to be holed up somewhere and bunkered down. I was just, you know, working really hard on trying to clean up the sound and stuff. But I'm learning how to do that with my proprietary equalization secrets that only MTC knows about. <laughs> I developed, so <laughs> don't tell anyone. But no, yeah, it's, it's just, just I master my own. It's just stuff our now. secret, man. Nobody will know. No one will accept the shadow. Yeah. Um, instead of spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, on producers and studios to master it for you you just learn to do it yourself over the years and then it saves you so much money it's amazing it's a great thing anyway yeah. no, no, that's good stuff <laughs> so, yeah man. i was it... sitting here with my baby my jackson it's a oh my gosh this is a custom guitar it's like oh just hand rubbed wood it smells like wood it smells like my father's wood shop and it's a beautiful beautiful custom guitar it's got gold knobs and and tuning pegs and Two DiMarzio humbuckers, so it's really loud, so it's great for rock and roll. And I love this guitar. It's just. Because after seeing Keith Richards and Ron Wood and Nick yes, and Charlie Watts uh, on TV over the weekend playing on, on, their on the a great uh, global citizen thing, yes, a fantastic yeah. night. Yeah, that was it was so great cool. to see Mick and the boys, Eddie Vedder, of course, and all all good. Exactly. And uh, you know, we're doing a little Eddie Vedder um, on "Won't Back Down." It's a great cover that uh, Ron found. Yeah, that's that. of course the Petty great anthem and yeah. i think it's that's uh it's really appropriate hey listen i want to talk to you since we mentioned petty and vetter and others um i really feel mark and you know i in all great respect to to bernie of course who has sort of led us here over the last four years or so is the fact that there is um a real need for the second wave of bernie bernie land or bernieville or however you want to describe it um I think that young artists, and I mean young under the age of 50, or even under the age of 60 for that matter, who are, you know, who have the political gift 
to communicate, who have the uh, ability financially because they've done pretty well. Not all musicians have, but some who have been successful. You don't have to be Bruce Springsteen millionaire. And I think that there's a, a real need because if you look at this, and I thought the other night with the Citizen, the Global Citizen Festival, they seem to understand this. I mean, I think Chris Martin was one of the first people I know that uh, Lady Gaga was also involved in, in all of this. And in Global Citizen, they did a thing in Central Park with uh, with one of my favorites, Alicia Keys. Then there are a lot of people who really are concerned about the country and the world that we live in now. And, you know, I think they are willing to sort of do more than just make another album or another another record. I think they could lead, and I think they could be good governors, a senator, and maybe even a president. And I, bring, I brought up the point in the commentary about Peter Garrett. The former lead singer of Midnight Oil, Beds Are Burning, you know, was a long, long time in the Australian Parliament. I don't know if he ever decided to run for president or prime minister there. I think that there are many examples, and not only in in, in American or English-speaking countries, but I know in South America there's a number of people, and there were... There was a uh, a musician, I want to say in Ecuador, I may be completely wrong, that was indeed uh, a musician. And I just think that, you know, and, and you, nobody better to talk about this than you are, because you understand where these people's souls are. I mean, a lot of people don't go in it to be a rock star. Yeah, there's that crowd. They're still playing in Rat and, and uh, Round and Round and that Geico commercial and, you know, and, and all, the, all the sort of hair bands. But there are a lot of people who don't, who are not part of that world. And I just think that this is an area that progressives need to really push on because the lawyers and the business people that have been the backbone of the Democratic Party, that's not cutting it. And they have sold out themselves. So I don't get your thoughts on this because I think it's something that the, the progressive movement has to consider. Well, first of all, I have to defend Rat, even though, yes. They did become very commercialized and kind of boring. Their first album rocks, which is true with a lot of bands where their first album is brilliant and then they sell out and they do too many drugs and they're right, and right, boring. Right. I just love the guy from commercial. Okay. Also, my school chum, Deborah, Asian American woman, became their costume designer. So shout All out right. to her. Do whatever you have to do to get down there in Hollywood, man, because it's good for costume designers to be around bands. But, you know, shout out to Lady Gaga, who did a great job with all her connections, right? Bringing all these diverse artists together universally, worldwide, globally, on a short-term basis. That was really amazing. And the World Health Organization and the, uh, the Global Citizens Group did an amazing job. It went on all day long. And there were all sorts of substreams and other things going on, so they took great advantage of all the technical platforms. There were also, by the way, uh, concerts going on in Seattle at the time you know, to raise money for clubs here. Um, and I know the the Belltown Yacht Club, which is a, you know it's a funny name for a rock club. <laughs> it's kind of making fun of the rich, but uh, we love that place. And they had a whole day long series of acts, you know, doing that. And there is some discussion of politics. For instance, you know, Pramila Jayapal just yesterday unveiled her Medicare for All program, and I was I did participate in that. It was really cool. There was also, by the way, a, an, an international webinar with Reporters Without Borders and the American Psychological Association over the weekend, which is totally unprecedented. And that was for journalists who are suffering from PTSD, you know, which we can talk about sometime in the future. But and I know people like Chris Edges, so I've had long conversations with about this uh, who who do suffer from being war correspondents and things. And there is also some people. You know, experiencing that now. But to get back to your question, I've been asked to, you know, run for office many times. And I know that there are several things that artists think about. There have been poets like Vaclav Havel, who became the leader of the Czech Republic. But there are issues that we all face. And I even have some leadership experience in terms of having been served on the boards of directors for several nonprofits and now as executive director for Democracy Watch News. But The first thing that artists, I think, and writers, musicians um, of all kinds encounter is the the time and commitment, which you would know well about having run for Cambridge City Council, the the time and commitment that it – and the total dedication that it takes to run a political campaign. And you really need to have good people around you and be well-funded and all of that. So, yeah, it's an everyday, all-day-long job. It's like – it's like being a journalist. You just never have any set schedule or anything. You do what you have to do. And you have to be ready if, some, if the media calls to go on air in a half hour or whatever. So 
So there's that issue, which really interferes a lot of times with artists' lifestyles like my own, where you know we're used to sort of staying up all night, whether doing a journalism piece or recording in the mu- in the music studio or something, or playing in clubs. But that would create an issue where people would really have to change their lifestyle. Sometimes people in the music industry, you know, as you can well imagine from all the stories, are quite libertine and you know might be doing things that wouldn't be acceptable um, in front of a camera at a press briefing. But I think they understand that. It's a different world now, though. I think ever since, you know, Bill Clinton admitted that he smoked pot or whatever, and and Barack Obama, too, uh, that the idea of somebody's past lifestyle doesn't really mean you can't run for office. Uh, Hopefully people don't have film of you doing things that you don't want people to see. But there's also the political commitment, and there are a lot of artists who are either very jealous of their independence, which I am, which is one of the reasons why I decided not to run for office. I mean, I was you know, student body president and things like that. I know what it's like. If the right moment came up and it was the thing to do, that right. might be different. Mark, I, I think this is another avenue here, if, if I might, is that we're now not only at this moment in a crisis, uh, both economically and in depression, but I think, as, as one of our great callers, John, pointed out, you know, we, we have a kind of a, a constitutional crisis going on here with the current occupant. Now, you know, maybe another Democrat gets in there and that doesn't continue to, to happen. But I think that there is a real lack. I mean, the fact is, is, as many progressives have pointed out, including yours truly, is that the majority of the American people don't vote. That means they don't give a damn what goes on. They don't think that government makes a difference. And I think the only way to really change that narrative is to get people to inspire. Now, you know, if you can't be inspired, and I'm just going to use him as an example, by a a, a Bruce Springsteen, or if if Bono was an American uh, by the lead singer of U2, or of Eddie Vedder, or Lady Gaga, then I don't know how you can't be. And I think that they have a better chance of standing up to Wall Street, of standing up to the to the world uh, that, again, you know, is always out there willing to give the money as long as you sell out. I think that it's it to me is is a a group. Now you don't have to just limit it to musicians. You can be some great actors. I mean, I think of Mark Ruffalo and Danny Glover who came out for Bernie. And but I think that that's the, the concept because otherwise we're going to come up with the same schmucks we have all the time and the people that go along get along and they stay there for thirty years and they they lost their fastball a long time ago. We're seeing that now with Joe Biden in terms of propping him up, propping him up. You know, giving them the Bernie talking points and Warren talking points just to sort of do it. If you had Bruce or Eddie or or even John Bon Jovi, you'd have somebody who is articulate enough, can inspire. And I think that that is what you need. I mean, you can always learn policies, and they don't have to start off running for president. They can start off running for mayor. So that's sort of how I look at it, my man. It's interesting that you mentioned John Bon Jovi because he did come here to Seattle to visit a unique alternative alcohol treatment program. So he put some money into rehab facilities, uh, and that was part of a tour here to try to look at some systems to, um, to come up with models that worked. And that's a, we could talk about that sometime, about how they run that place too, but it, it is very unique. But a lot of artists and musicians, and if Lady Gaga run a, wanted to run for president, that would be great. And then I can tell you the positive aspects of this, but the... There are a lot of artists who are cynical about politics, and there's this formula that we keep seeing, and it's a difficult formula to do with because it's like this corrupt system leads to apathy equals right wing taking over. And so there is a part of the population that's more than willing to take advantage of the fact that people are apathetic, and then there are the people who really should be in there making the changes who have become apathetic, and that's what we have to keep fighting. There have been some examples of Rock the Vote with one of the guys, you know, from Rage Against the Machine and Jello Biafra and folks like that. I got to meet them and hang out with them because of Rock the Vote, which went around the country trying to register young folks to vote. I think those kinds of ideas really do resonate with the young folks because they get to go see a rock band and for free then they also get registered to vote and get pick up a lot of information and then the artists who are on stage which also happens at Hempfest by the way the largest cannabis festival in the in the world I think and which takes place in Seattle every year but like me you know they ask us to get up on stage and educate people and talk about legalization issues and health issues and all that so the same thing happens with these campaigns like rock the vote so 
Morello and those guys, I think they should continue to, to get involved with politics, if not running for office themselves, then definitely allowing a place for young people to gather and talk about these ideas. There are a lot of alternatives to the current system that you know we're working in, which obviously isn't working very well under this kind of stress. So there are alternatives that people can be talking about. And if it's a famous person like Neil Young, you know, who has kind of stepped forward in a lot of ways to speak out lately, if it's somebody like that, um, then all power to them, and I think they will get support. So you definitely do have uh, your finger on the pulse of the young people in America and that they are looking for someone that they think actually represents them. And that's part of the problem is that people who might feel like they're more representative don't actually run for political office a lot of times because sometimes their heroes are environmentalists, you know, like Greta Thunberg or they're actors or musicians, you know, and I, I maybe also in the United States, there's been a little bit of lack of awareness politically for a while amongst members of the music industry, and the political music has been missing in the public arena. I mean, you just haven't heard the songs that you, you the themes of the songs that you used to hear back maybe in the late 60s or early 70s, when people actually were writing very political songs, you know, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, and they were in Bob Dylan, they were becoming number one hits in the country because people really wanted to hear that kind of music. And I don't know, you know, the music industry is all over the place now because the old school, almost like studio system where the big time record labels like Capitol and uh, kind of controlled everything, that's sort of passed. And so people are kind of making it up as they go along. Macklemore definitely set a standard in getting it, people to do a lot of downloads of his stuff and become independent long before any distributor signed on with him. And so that's kind of where the music industry is going. It's really niche oriented. But I can say that, you know, Saturday was a great uh, sign that people can connect together quickly. Yeah. And I have seen that in all of the online concerts that have been going on around the country. There's also a Facebook site called Worldwide Quarantine Concerts or something like that. And it's all supporting this kind of thing. So you can go to that site and it started with five people sharing information. Now there are hundreds of thousands of people on that site watching artists from all over the world. I mean, think about what Woodstock meant to the to the '60s and the anti-Vietnam and protest, and think about what Live Aid did in the 1980s to to the famine in Africa and, and to AIDS in Africa. Think about what this Global Citizen Project's been like over the last few years, and uh, a lot of major issues. And I, and I just think that of any group of people. You know, I would put a lot more faith in them because of their talents and because of their their willing to care. I mean, these were musicians; well, they, they weren't Sarandon? actors. Yeah, yeah. Susan Sarandon is a great She's actress. There are a number of people, and a lot of them were connected to Bernie. But I just feel that there is more musicians, and again, they tend to have a, a deeper soul in a lot of cases, as some some actors uh, do. But you know, talking about you mentioned a lot of the folks who are in the news and reporters and so forth. I know you've been fighting for a long time for protection of journalists, and even more now in this time where Trump is always trashing one or the other. Amish Alcindor is another one that I'm thinking about uh, that comes to mind. But there should be some protection for, for journalists. I know that's something that you've been championing for a long time. And, uh, you know, before we roll here, I want to give you a couple of minutes to sort of explain a little bit more of that. It is an important issue that we deal with a lot at Democracy Watch News because for a healthy democracy, of course, there has to be a free press. And we have these issues in the United States like a Federal Communications Commission, which tends to promote corporate media consolidation amongst you know, a small group of owners. And then you also have issues with being locked out of press conferences and reporters being actually thrown in jail for refusing to release their sources because they don't have whistleblower protection and things like that, which was happen actually was happening under the Obama administration as well. So they're very much a concern, and that's why Reporters Without Borders has ranked in the United States only 48th in the world in terms of press freedom. So I think that all of these issues are something that needs to be talked about more openly and publicly, and including it in corporate media in the United States. But unfortunately, I haven't seen that happening too much. But there are amazing groups like Reporters Without Borders, which is a it started in France, but it's an international group 
which keeps um, track of all these press freedom issues around the world, and you can go to their website and check out any individual country around the world and see where they're ranked in terms of press freedom. Um, by the way, China is like 179 out of 180, I think. So. But the United States is 48th, and we have been slipping over the last decade or so, and partly because of the corporate media consolidation, partly because we have a president who's very anti-press. But yeah, these are issues that need to be talked about. There's also the Reporters Committee for Freedom of the Press, RCAFP. They're also a very important group in this fight. Free Press, um, the Committee to Protect Journalists, CPJ, um, Reporters Without Borders, and, and in some ways also the Society of Professional Journalism, because it's uh, the SPJ, because there are groups that are working on these issues, and they're sending out press releases all the time and trying to contact corporate media, but you know, the corporate media is not really paying much attention. And it's one of those issues where it's kind of an ontological problem, because to get the corporate media to report on themselves is very difficult. <laughs> and they tend to not want to report yeah. information, I think. This is just a theory. You know, I don't have any secret memo on this, but my theory is that they uh, do, not, do not want to report on information that would undermine their own credibility. Um, so to talk a lot about being 48th, ranked 48th in the world in terms of press freedom, l let me tell you, you know this, Jeff. There are other things that get me work, like being in Seattle and being around all these companies and Google and Microsoft and Amazon and all that. That's, you know, and the politics up here, which is very, very much sort of moving towards democratic socialism. But the thing that doesn't get me work in you know, articles at the nation or anywhere else is, press freedom and it's not for lack of trying <laughs> so and i will yeah, continue I know that feeling <laughs> because that's my job right as a as a journalist we all have to stand for democracy and freedom of the press that's just that's basic right. tenets of what a free press is all about so we need to protect that in the united states and continue i i just call on all editors all publishers all reporters all bloggers all netizens and reporters without borders, we call them, to just make that a priority in whatever you cover and whatever you write about and make sure it's a priority for your magazine, website, newspaper, podcast, TV broadcast, oh, whatever yeah, it is, so right. make it a priority. Mark, it's always great. Your song is fantastic. It is really cool, and I know the Bernie Sanders would love it, too. Thank you, my friend. I want to thank Ron Kreider for producing this broadcast. Uh, keep on fighting, folks. We'll be back tomorrow. John Nichols, uh, Rona Freed, and Ryan Grimm of The Intercept. Stay tuned for that at 3.30 Eastern. Until then, my name is Jeff Santos. Right now, it is my time to say I gotta go. Broadcasting live, we are AM 1530, WVBS, Middleborough, Taunton, and W259, DD, Middleborough Center, 99.7 FM. Here's another way to listen to the Jeff Santos Show. Now you can listen to the Jeff Santos Show 24-7. And remember, our website is revolutionradionetwork.com.